Hello, everybody. This will be our third uh, video for the Chapter 7 practice, and in this one we'll be looking at the Dill's Alder reaction. I've got about eight practice problems here. All right, so in getting started with these, these are, are, are pretty much like a 1-4 addition, but they're what we call a 1-4 cyclo addition. And so you're always looking for, just like we did with the 1-2-1-4, one, one, look for the double bond, the single bond, the double bond, right? That's what you want to look for. All right, and so these are always going to act as one, two, three, four, right? Like so. And so the you know you could number one down here. Um, it doesn't really matter, but um, and a lot of these have some level of symmetry to them. We'll we'll kind of get into that as we go. But um, you're looking for you know four carbons where you have a double, single, double. All right. Um, and so the way I like to talk about it is that the diene here, right? So the two alkenes, right, diene, the diene starts as the attacker. And so since this is technically symmetrical right here, it doesn't matter which of these two pi bonds you pick. So I'm just going to pick the top one as the as the first initial attacker, right? And it's going to attack um, your double or triple bonded carbon, all right? Now this molecule also has symmetry right here. So it doesn't matter if I say it attacks here or if it comes down and attacks here, right? It's just easier to write it this way based off the other arrows I have to draw. So from there, once this attacks, right, uh, the issue that you've got here is one, why does it attack here in particular? Because this carbon is technically partial positive, right? Just like this one. And it's because this carbonyl acts as what we call an, an electron withdrawing group right so the oxygen right is pulling electron density away from this carbon like up up that way all right so it's pulling the electron density away from that carbon so that's why it's slightly partial positive all right from there though this carbon now has five bonds right this arrow is trying to make a fifth bond that can't happen so this pi bond pi bonds are floppy right they can move around a bit so this pi bond can then say no well I gotta go I gotta leave and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna attack this bottom diene carbon so carbon number four and then the same problem as before this carbon now has is trying to have five bonds that can't happen so the pi bond will move here right and so what does that mean let me start by drawing these four carbons right one two three four right one two three four Right, and now what's going to happen? You're seeing a bond is formed between carbon one and this carbon, so I'm going to label that as carbon number five, and then a bond is forming between this carbon and carbon number four, so I'm going to label that as six. So there's a bond between one and five, and a new bond between six and four. So I'm going to put the five there, put the six there, so there's our five and six. Right now, what are we missing? Well, for instance, between two and three here, we should have a pi bond. That's what this arrow is saying. So I should have a pi bond there, right? And then that pi bond's gone, right? That pi bond helped make this bond right here. Um, but we need to put this other stuff that's coming off of five and six. So here's the other stuff that came off of five and six. Now it says there are two possible products. And a lot of this happens because if you remember, we talked about retaining stereochemistry. So this around this double bond it looks cis right so we have to show the cis nature of it coming off of this ring at carbons five and six so you have two dashes you could put there uh, or let me redraw so redraw the original structure and instead of two dashes you could have two wedges so I'm gonna put a wedge there and I'm gonna put a wedge there okay so that's where the two possible products come from. It's based off of stereochemistry. Okay. Um, now we look at this guy here. Same difference. Same same thing as before, right? Find our our double, single, double. So that's one, two, three, four. All right. And then from there, all right, you're going to see it attack this double bonded carbon. Right. There's an there's an electron withdrawing group right here. Right, that's going to pull electron density. That's going to force this pi bond out to form a bond with carbon number four, and then that's going to force this pi bond up into the middle right there. Okay, so what are we looking at? We're going to see the same thing as before: one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we're going to make ourselves another six-membered ring, 
all right, where that's one, two, three, and four, all right, and then here's five and six, all right. Now, what was coming off? Carbons one and four had methyl groups, so I'm going to put a methyl group there, a methyl group there, all right, so that's one and four. Five and six had this um, aldehyde functional group coming off, and carbon six had a nitrile coming off, CN. All right, now, two possible products. It's because of the stereochemistry. Oh, hang on, I forgot my double bond, right? Remember this arrow? I formed a double bond right here. Okay, so the so two things to remember. You're gonna make a new ring, right? So here, between these two, we only had one ring. Now in the product, we got two. So we made one additional ring. Same thing here, zero rings. Now we have a ring in our product. The other thing is, you've got one, two, so you always consume two of your pi bonds. So if you think about counting them up here, you got one, two, three, four, five, right? We had five pi bonds. Now how many do we have? One, two, three. I consumed two of my pi bonds. Same thing here. I had one, two, three, four. Now I've got one, two, right? So technically there are pi bonds in the nitrile, but they weren't shown. So that was kind of a hint that those pi bonds don't do anything. All right, now anyway, so in retaining the stereochemistry, this looked trans to begin with, so we have to show that in the product. So if I put a wedge on the aldehyde group here, that means I gotta put a dash here, and then vice versa, all right, there's another way I can represent the trans there as a dash on the aldehyde and a wedge on the nitrile, like so. Okay, so those are our two possible products there, all right? third one uh, what do we got so there's our double single double so it'll attack it'll attack our pi bond okay um, this pi bond will be forced out to here and then this pi bond will move into the middle right you notice it's the same three attacks one two three four five and six so what are we gonna do we're gonna make a six membered ring what else are we gonna do we're going to so I'm gonna say that's one two three four that's five that's six so what else we got to do well carbon number two had this OCH3 okay and you don't have to worry about stereochemistry because there's a pi bond here so technically there is a double bond right there okay next up I gotta show these carbonyls coming off <laughs> two possible products why because doesn't this have stereochemistry it looks cis so I have to make it look cis over here. So I could have two dashes here, or I can have two wedges. Ooh, let me put my OCH3 out there. Okay, so two possible products. Now in this one, right, you notice it says there's only one possible product, and that's because your dienophile here is a triple bond, not a double bond. You notice here the dienophile was a double, a double, and a double. Right here it's a triple bond. So you don't have stereochemistry around an alkyne, right? Um, now the one thing that did happen here is I changed how this looked on purpose. This is a chain, so uh, with, a, with a little bit of heat you can actually rotate it to where you'd have it could look like this and then so that's our one two three four right one two three four and then you notice here you've got an ethyl group and an ethyl group so now your diene diene looks like this all right and so I'm gonna make it look like that so that it's consistent with these other ones all right and what's gonna happen it's gonna attack Boop. And then one of these two pi bonds is going to come back around and attack, and then we're going to push that pi bond in the middle. So, yet again, what are we going to have? A six-membered ring. So, let's start with that six-membered ring. All right, so let me number them. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, and six. So, what all did we have? Two and three had ethyl groups. Uh, and then five and six had these other groups. So five had, this is CHO or an aldehyde. Six is a nitrile. Ooh, oh, hang on. Six is a nitrile. I put my nitrogen first by accident. Okay, now also remember you only consume two of your pi bonds. So there should still be a pi bond between carbons two and three. So I'm gonna put that pi bond there. 
and you only consumed one of these two. So there should still be a pi bond between five and six. All right. So what does that mean? Right. Your your dienophiles can have double or triple bonds that participate in these reactions. All right. Now the next couple, these are uh, making what we call bicyclo compounds. So just to kind of show you, right, the general idea of what's happening here, right, you're still going to have top pi bond attack here. This pi bond moves out and attacks here, and then that pi bond moves there. All right, so there's our three consistent moves, right, over and over and over again. Now, this five-membered ring stayed together, so let's draw that part, right? So that's the, the original five-membered ring. Now, these two pi bonds are gone, and they formed bonds with carbon five and six over here, right? So what does that mean? It means we're going to have something like this. This is called a bicyclo compound. So this is carbon five, and this is carbon six, and the rest of that is the original ring. Okay, now there's also a pi bond here, right, based off the arrows. And then you've got the rest of the five and six parts of the ring. So, okay, so this is kind of what you're looking at. And just to make this understood, this bicyclo compound right here, this, this carbon right here, so that carbon is this one. And I made it like a wedge, so it's kind of pointing out, like pointing up at us, okay. Um, now this has two possible products because remember retaining stereochemistry that looks cis around that double bond so you could have two dashes right or you can have two wedges right like that so those are your two oh those are your two products all right um, here we have another alkyne, right? And so remember, right? It looks when you have an alkyne, you have the possibility of having double bonds on either side of that ring, ring that forms. So one, two, three, four, right? It's going to attack, right? And then only one of the pi bonds will come back around, not both of them, just one. And then that pi bond will move in the middle. So what are we going to see? So let me first draw this six-membered ring, right? Because it stays intact just like this five-membered ring did, all right? So there's our one, two, three, four, right? And then five and six over here, right? Come over here. I know it looks weird. I could have drawn it a little better, but here's five and six. Okay, and what does five and six have? It's got COOH. Okay. Now, in terms of the double bonds, one, two, three, four. So I should have two of them left, right? I should have one between the two and three and one between the five and six, okay? Um, and then I like to make these two carbons that were a part of that original ring, so those two right there, I make those a wedge just like what I did up here, okay? Um, I guess if I'm going to try and make it look a little better, another way you could draw it is draw the one, two, three, four, five, and six, so and then draw the, the little two in the middle right here. I guess it doesn't, to me, it doesn't look as wopsided that way, so. Right, so that is that. So I'm not saying it's two products. I'm saying this and this or the, that one just looks prettier, okay? All right, next up, we've got two rings coming at ya. All right, so we've got this pi bond will attack there. This pi bond will attack there, and then that will move there. Okay. Um, now, with this, I'll go ahead and draw the five-membered ring as I did before. Okay. So, this five-membered ring is this one. So, this is the starting one. So, let me go ahead and put the OCH3, the OCH3. All right. And there's going to be a double bond there. And then these two carbons are going to be right over here. Boom, boom, boom right okay so these this one carbon in the middle that is that okay I bolded that side too so you can kind of see all right so now this is your five and six and what else is coming off of it the rest of that good old ring boom boom all right so what do we do we make a six membered ring what else do we do we retain stereochemistry which I haven't done yet all right specifically right it looks this here so the two products would be this or that, right? So two dashes or, okay, 
Hang on, I'm getting to it. Two wedges. Oh no, I'm going to run out of room super fast. So it, it looks a little scrunched up. I ran out of room, but there's the two wedges. Okay. Now, um, the thing to also remember here, uh, you make you make a new ring. So we had two, and now we have one, two, three. Right. So you make a new ring, and then you always consume two of your pi bonds. And how many do we have? One, two, three. So we only kept one. Right. All right. And then lastly, we're gonna see this attack here. This come back around here, and then that move up here. So we're going to make a new ring. So we should have two rings in our product. Okay, um, from there, let me number it. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so we're going to have these two carbons in between one and four still. All right, so that's what those are. Those it doesn't look like two, but there's two carbons there. Um, and then I'll, so at carbon number one we had an OCH three. At carbon number two we had a methyl. We also have a pi bond here, right between two and three. And then we should keep one of those pi bonds between five and six. And then what do we got? Oh, these are ketones. So. Right, that right there. So the COCH3, that's what that is right there. Both of those. Okay, cool. And that would be our one possible product there. We can't really worry about stereochemistry here because it's double bonds, right? So anyway, all right. So that is our practice for Dill's Alder. Um, hopefully that makes you feel prepared. All right, adios.